Hi everyone, welcome to State Space Modeling with Tim. Today we're going to be looking at an example where we're going to be converting a transform function into a state model. So in the previous video we covered the steps on how to do it by deriving the whole procedure. And in this video we're just going to try to cement the knowledge that we had in the previous video by doing this example. So for the you guys who understood the steps that we presented in the previous video, you can quickly try to do this example and then you can check the solution after you've attempted the, um, the question. So for people who have not seen the previous video, I've, I've just quickly outlined the steps down here so that we can be able to understand um, the question going further so that it can be easy and we can apply the steps all over again. So I'm just going to do a quick recap of the steps. It's just five simple steps that should make the um, this whole procedure of problem solving or converting from uh, the frequency domain all the way to the time domain to eventually having the state space model way simple. So the first step is just you write the transfer function in a linear form. This means that it must be state it must not be in, in a in a fraction form. So the second the second uh, step is convert your transfer function to time to the time domain using the inverse Laplace transform and here we have the inverse Laplace transform assuming zero initial conditions. So if you're not assuming zero initial conditions, your system has um, non-zero initial conditions at t at t is equals to t subscript zero, then you shouldn't be using this one. You should check your Laplace tables to see what, which procedure to take on. The third part, um, the third step is you should define your phase variables to make phase or state vector to make phase or state vector x. Um, like we said, the phase variable is very much similar to your state variables. Uh, it's just that since we are moving from the frequency domain to the time domain, we call our state variables the phase variables. And step four is you differentiate your phase variables, which you found in step three, uh, to make your dynamic vector x dot. And that will fall part of your equation, of your two equations, which are defined in step five where we say write the state model in matrix form so again our state model is defined by these two equations so it's very important that you do so so without wasting any more time let's start on the problem so today we are looking at this one we got we are looking at this simple um transfer function where we have uh, we have a constant at the top and then we have a ration um a polynomial at the bottom so I'm just going to copy this down here and then we can start solving the problem. Okay, I'm just going to place this just here. And then we can start solving. We're going to be following the same steps um, that I just detailed here. So I think I'm going to outline everything as we go on. So we're going to say step one. Remember, step one was just saying we should. Um, linearize everything so how we, how we're gonna linearize everything is the first step we say um, let h of s be defined as y of s over u of s because this is literally is um, your transfer function is just your ratio of your input to your output so we can express that in that so we easily say y of s over u of s is equals to, and I'm just going to copy this transfer function here. And now when we say we rationalize, what we actually mean, let me add a page. When we rationalize, we mean we just cross multiply this equation here so that we everything is in a linear format. And that's how we linearize, sorry, not rationalize, linearize. And we're going to write this out now. Like I said, we cross multiply and we're going to have 9s squared plus 26s plus 24 is equals to us. I will try to move a bit faster so that we don't waste too much time. And I'm assuming that people did watch the first video so they'll be able to follow the steps here and understand, keep on track. So we've rationalized the set. Now we can move on to the second step. And step two says we convert to the time domain. And again, we use the inverse Laplace transform. So if we take the inverse, uh, taking the inverse Laplace transform, taking ILT, assuming again initial, um, 
initial zero conditions zero initial conditions i uh, can't remember how to say that okay so what we have now is going to be the third derivative of y dt3 plus 9 uh, second derivative of y dt squared and 26 the first derivative of y plus 24 y don't forget that y of s is multiplying with everything here um, I said in the previous video that s is an operator of y of s and that's very important because we start to see that when we convert from the frequency domain to the time domain what we get is a d operator that is our differ, um, our derivatives okay and then we take the inverse Laplace transform of the right hand side side as well and that just gives us 24u okay and it is worth noting i think we can note this here um y is just y of t for those who might be confused and u is u of t as well okay so that's step two out of the way so now we can move to step three and step three is we take um, we're taking our uh, phase our phase variable so we're gonna say let x1 is equals to y again i'm gonna remind you of the how to identify your phase or state variables it is the variable that's being differentiated with respect to time and here you can see in our differential equation that the variable that's being differentiated with respect to time is y because we have the first derivative, we have it in its natural form, y, and then we have it in its first derivative, and second and third derivative. Nothing else is being differentiated with respect to time, and we can ignore the input, obviously, for that, for that um, statement. Okay, so now we have that, and now we have x2 is equal to the first derivative of y. x3 is the second derivative of y and i think those are the all the state variables we need because we're gonna have that um quickly let me just confirm yes those are all the state variables we're gonna need or oh, the phase variables sorry about that and now we can move on to step four And that is to now differentiate our phase variables so that we can uh, develop our dynamic vector. Okay, so go back to the blue pen. So x1 dot is equals to uh, dy dt. And this is equals to x2. That's worth noting. And um, x2 dot is equals to the second derivative. which is equals to uh, x3. There you can tell from here this is the second derivative. And x3 dot is equals to what? Is equals to the third derivative. Um, dt3. And that was supposed to be 2. Sorry about that. I keep forgetting to put that. Please forgive me. And this one is not equals to x4. We don't have an x4. So what this is equals to, we, we, we have to go back to our differential equation up here because here is our third derivative. That means we're going to have to rearrange all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one down there and I'm going to take it all the way down so that we can, we can manipulate this uh, differential equation so that we can find out what x is dot is okay so what we want to do is i'm just going to try to outline this in red so that it's a bit more obvious we're going to have to move this all the way there so that we can express this one on its own okay so let's start in on that so we have d3 y dt3 and because this is not changing we can start with it 
and it's gonna be minus and I'm gonna start from the right hand side to make things a bit easier it's gonna be 24y minus 26 dy dt minus 9 d squared y dt squared okay so we have that so the next thing is I'm just gonna try to I'm going to try to express all of this in terms of our state variables. Um, so let me actually just write this a bit down. Um, in that, okay, so we're going to have 3 dot is equals to, so we have minus 24 y, so it's minus 24 x 1 minus 26 x2 minus 9 x3 and I'm just getting these um, values from here it's literally direct translation and we have the 24u so we put our input term right at the end the u is our input okay so now we have successfully um, done step which step was this? This was step four. So now we can move on to step five, and I'm just going to do it on the next page. Okay, so step five. Again, I'm just going to express this, um, this ma matrix form so that everyone else is able to follow what we're doing. Okay, that is that, and that is y is equals to cx plus du our uh, state vector that's our state equation this is our output equation so we're going to try to express this in matrix form so i'm just going to quickly look into this so we have x1 dot x2 dot and i think we also have x3 dot yes so I'm going to start with x3 dot because it is the one with the most entries. So this should be minus 24, minus 26, minus 9. And that's for our first matrix. So minus 24, minus 26, minus 9. Okay. And then we're going to move to x2 dot. It's just x3. So that's going to be zero zero one that's x3 there and then our x1 dot is just x2 so that's uh, zero one zero just like that and we're just going to express this x1 x2 x3 that is our x vector our x column vector and we're going to have our B vector, which is looking at here, is just going to be 0, 0, 024 because it only is, our input is only impacting X3 dot. Um, sorry, let me just try to change here. So that's 0, 0, 024. And we have our input matrix U. Okay, that is first equation the state matrix and now our second equation y remember we said y is equals to x1 so this can be easily expressed as 1 0 0 and that's going to be x1 x2 and x3 and just like that we are done and that is our solution, quickly done in less than 15 minutes. So for the next video, we're going to be looking at, as promised, um, converting transfer functions in the form of P over Q, where P and Q are polynomials. And hopefully that will be quicker. Until then, take care.